What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Man Bites Film, episode 75. Yes! We're almost, we're almost yes. there. Fucking five. As always, I'm your host, Brandon. Big 100. 25 weeks away from 100, or God knows how many weeks, because we're weird and sometimes we don't do shows. Yeah, well, 25 weeks is going to put us where? 25 uh, what? I was saying 25 weeks is going to put us where? Uh, March. It's, it's somewhere like in around February, the time March. The Empire. Yes, because Lewis has been saying uh, spooky empire, spooky empire, spooky empire, so... Uh, for now, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it literally falls on the the fall spooky empire. So it, I think the it fall falls. of the empire of the spooky empire. Sorry. Oh, oh dear God! You know what ah, this means? Speaking of, Brandon. Wait, you know I haven't even means? introduced. Wait, wait. What'd you say, William? People know who we are. Um, <laughs> fuck <laughs> off! No, uh-huh. we'll get there in a second. Um, I'm Phoenix. That's Lewis. Brandon is hosting. Carry on. <laughs> okay, um, cool. <laughs> We're going with that shirt. Sure. <laughs> um. This means that he's not going to allow us to take a single week off just because he's going to want to time it with, like, it doesn't matter if Armageddon were to come. He's going to make us record an episode so that we can still do the 100th episode. You guys make it sound like I'm a freaking pansy about this shit. No, it's, it's not you're that you're a pansy. It's, it's, you're like, a it's like a fucking that, like, regime, dude. Like, you're you like, know, you're like, we are doing... We, yeah. You had a Category 5 hurricane and you were like, and we can still record, right? And we're like, fuck no, we can't. It's a category 5 hurricane coming yeah, in. Yeah, dude, it's like, like yeah. well, what about... I'm like, we're like, no, not what about nothing? We're not fucking recording. But you see, no. it didn't even fucking hit us. So, I mean, come on, man. But you see, had we, not ta- had we not taken that week off, now we would be missing your 100th episode at Spooky. So you're fucking welcome. You only get I- one sick day a year, so yeah, this is our sick day. <laughs> Good. Our next sick day, our next sick day, since it's going to be next year, we'll be on Spooky Empire weekend. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway, so. Brandon, go ahead and introduce us. I'm sorry. I, I may have cut you off there a little nah, bit. You, you already did it, dude. Uh, <laughs> as William said, I am Brandon, that's Lewis, and that is William. If you are joining us for the first time, or the 75th time, we're a weekly movie podcast, where we talk about movie news. We review one movie all together, and then we have our three individual reviews at the end of the show. So, Lewis, take it away, buddy. So, speaking of Empire, um, that we were just talking about, but the segue got ruined thanks to uh, Mr. Fatboy William Phoenix. <clears throat> You're welcome. Um, so, the Mandalorian executive producer, John Favreau, okay, he wants to make... A Star Wars holiday special on Disney Plus. So I don't know if either one of you have seen any of the the holiday specials for Star Wars. I've seen, um, I've seen, yes, I've seen most of it. I have. It's terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely fucking terrible. William. So there's this coworker of mine that has never seen Star Wars. And she's been coming over on our days off or before work to watch it. And we finally watched episode. We started with the original three. And then we just finally watched episode three today. And then she's coming over Thursday, Friday to watch episode seven and eight. And she looks at me. She goes like, so when I were doing the um, Christmas episode and I looked at her and I'm like, the fuck never we're not. (laughs) Um, I've seen it twice in my life. That's. Two times too many. So <laughs> if if Favreau's gonna try and do something better for it, I mean anything is better than that. So <laughs> I mean the Hobbit is better than the Star Wars Christmas special. Hey, fuck you. So, and that's not you know, saying much. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> um so yeah, I have seen it to answer your question. It it's 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 a fucking train wreck. Like it's yeah. super bad. It's, it's really bad. Yes, like really bad. Yes. Um. Anyway, so I, I I don't know how I feel about that because I don't know whether I want to be scared or her actually like looking forward to it to see what the hell they're gonna do. But um, another thing that they announced, which is another thing that I have no idea how I feel about this, and I'm kind of scared because this 
director has a really bad track record. Um, M. Night Shyamalan has, they already announced that he's making two more films and that they're going to be dropping in 2021 and 2022. We have no details on what it is, but there's two movies and they're going to be dropping those two movies sometime in that period. I don't know about you guys. If you guys really enjoyed any of his movies lately. Uh, what was the last movie he released? Split. Honestly, I haven't seen Split. Did you watch um, uh, Glass? No. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Glass is the most recent one. Yeah, yeah. That sorry. Gla- one. I haven't sorry. seen Glass or Split. Um, so, no. Oh, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed Split. I did. I, I, Glass let me down. I really? didn't think that he did it. I, I didn't think that he did justice to especially how long it was set up it was. But then I think they could have done a lot better with it. Hmm. I mean, spoiler alert, when the principal guy, that's only his only weakness is water, dies because of a fucking puddle. A fucking <laughs> puddle. A goddamn puddle. Like, the guy's invincible. That's like saying Superman, like, paralyzes falling off a horse. Never mind. Bad analogy. Wow. <laughs> but, wow. <laughs> No, but honestly, like I, I, I think he could have done a lot better of a job with the last one, but it was still kind of like it was better than some of the, the stuff that he let out. So I like about five of his movies: uh, Six Sense, Unbreakable, yep. Pass, um, uh, what do you call it? Split, and uh, what do you call it? The what the hell is uh, Lady in the Water? Which you don't I know. like signs you didn't, or you didn't or... like signs? No, I did not like signs. Get out of here, dog! I, you're no longer on the show. Get out of here. <laughs> I, I really Stay didn't like signs. Next week when we have a new co-host, <laughs> <laughs> silent. So, anyways, um, William, you're gonna be pleased about this. Well, I don't know if you well, will be, but it, it's gonna be interesting to hear your reaction to this. So, you know how they did a movie about Legos. And you know they're they're kind of might have heard something about it, yeah. The they also made the emoji movie and all these random Dude, shit that they've been making movies of. So they're making. A Are you about Funko... to talk about like the Funko Pop movie that I've yep. known for like a month and a half, two months now? Yeah, they're making yeah, a not... Funko Pop movie. I'm not excited. I don't know about that. I, I, I'm, I'm excited. Kind of like, huh? <laughs> what? Because I think that it's going to be like. Since the Lego movie, people were like, oh my god, we can make a movie literally about anything we want. And then they came out with the Emoji movie, and that just sucked ass. Um, and I think, okay, I don't think that the Funko movie is going to suck ass, but I think it's going to suck. Hey, you never gonna, know. I, I don't think it's going to be the same as the Lego movie. Hey, we thought the same thing about the fucking Lego movie. It was like, who, what, why are they making a Lego movie? Like, hmm. you know. And what are they going to do? They're going to come out, like, how are they going to market this? They're going to come out with Funko Pops or Funko Pops and things that they already Funko Pop? Hey, you know what? <laughs> what it's the gonna hell? Be, it's going to be really interesting because your your market is going to go up. So, hmm. you know, all well, that all depends, but we'll see. Hey, I think you might if be able the to movie tanks, more. there's not going to be a market. Oh, I think there will be, even then. Even if it tanks, there's going to be a market for it. Mm. I um, guarantee it, dude. We will see. I'm not. I, I, I'm like. Eh, I'm skeptical. I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm not okay. I'm I skeptical, and I think, you. and I think it's not going to do great. But I could be proved wrong, and if I am, I'll be gladly proved wrong. And if I'm not, then I'll sit here and be like, I, I told you so, and we all lost money. Whose phone keeps vibrating? I don't know. Not mine. Not mine. So it has to be yours. No, it's not mine. That was weird. Whatever. Nobody loves me. Nobody's sending me anything. <laughs> I love you. Are you sure? Yeah, slightly. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> All right. So next news. This is going to make you squeal, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, Robert Downey Jr. is coming back to reprise his role as Tony Stark mm-hmm. in the Black Widow series. Yeah. yeah, which is a prequel. So I don't know how that's gonna make sense because didn't they meet for the first time in Iron Man two? But whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. But what do you think? 
William? Um. Well, if he's coming back, like Brendan said, they met in Iron Man Two. Which I'm hoping it's this is that actually not... set in the events of Civil War, but before Infinity War. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, the movie set in the '90s. Uh, no, the Black Widow movie is set between Captain America: Civil War and between Avengers: Infinity War. I'm reading it right now, straight from the. Really? I could have sworn yeah. it was in the '90s. What the fuck? Nope. Black Widow movie. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Uh huh. Yeah. And then it, it's a prequel. It's still a prequel, but it's you know, a prequel set in between two movies. Gotcha. Yeah. So okay, yeah, you're well, right. Talk, at least they're not going to be like a backstory of Black Widow. So it says, like, whenever they do prequels, they feel like, oh, if we're doing a prequel, we have to do a backstory. The fuck you don't. So I'm, a, so I'm so glad they're not doing it. It says following the premise, the sorry, following the events of Civil War, and it says that she finds herself alone and forced to confront her past. So I'm assuming there's going to be like um, flashbacks. flashbacks to like oh, her yeah. past in Russia or whatever. Yeah, there is, supposedly. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Sorry, then I stand corrected. I could have sworn I read somewhere that it was taking place in the 90s, but maybe I read wrong or whatever. I, I think that was the original intent because I remember hearing that same rumor as well. So, <laughs> I, I think that was the original idea that they had, and then they kind of shifted. They pivoted. Well, I'm kind of glad because this means, because like, when they said that Iron Man was going to come back, I'm like, I'm really hoping that we didn't wait this entire time for her to come back them to do like a prequel movie of like when she was Iron Man's like secretary basically or PA mm. because I'm like that is the worst time for Black Widow and we're, we're not going to get anything out of it but no but it's, it's going like, to be mostly taking place in Russia and stuff like that so at least from what I read so that's going to be interesting I think Um, ne- next thing that I wanted to go over Netflix has officially unveiled the latest Stephen King film that they are releasing. It's called In the Tall Grass. It drops October 4th, and it looks pretty awesome. The story revolves around a, a brother and sister. This is reading right off the, the kind of uh, synopsis of it. Mm-hmm. The story revolves around a brother and sister who, upon hearing a young boy's cry for help, venture into a field in Kansas, only to discover there may be no way out, and that something evil lurks within the tall grass. Yeah, sounds like, your, sounds like your typical the... Stephen King shit. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> to get into, like, the... Uh, there's, a, there's a panel that Stephen uh, Apparently Stephen King may be as uh, J.J. Abrams and Stephen King. Ooh. And it's going to be during New York Comic Con. Um, Interesting. So we shall see what it is. Speaking of New York Comic Con. Yes. Perfect segue. <laughs> it's not about it, too. So for you people out there, they're going to be they're either local to New York or they're coming into New York for New York Comic Con, which is going to be the first weekend in October. First full, yeah, no, actually the first weekend in October. Uh, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, I have decided that I'm going to try and jumpstart what I am naming the You Are Worthy campaign. It's a free campaign. Like, you don't have to spend any money. Uh, unless you, well, you spend money to get into the convention. But, here's the thing. I, 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 I am upgrading and I am doing um, Fat Thor. As we've all come to lovely uh, call him. But <laughs> because I don't want to just be like, you know, oh, it's just another fat Thor and he's making fun of it and whatnot. And I know that the character arc for Endgame, you know, it, it's heavily on like depression and like yep. uh, feeling, you know, uh, suicidal, PTSD, and obviously not feeling worthy. I have actually um, um, reached to a friend of mine who does uh, stickers, and she uh, I had a sticker custom made. Uh, if you go on Instagram, 
look for Raven Classy, like Ravenclaw and Classy. Raven Classy, that is the person that is making the stickers. Uh, and I got a You Are Worthy sticker in the shape of a hammer, which I put on one uh, on my hammer. And if you're going to New York Comic Con, or if you know somebody that's going, that's feeling down, that is dealing with a lot, that is feeling, you know, depression, PTSD, self-worth, self-doubt, self-esteem issues, anything like that, and just wants to have like a moment where like they feel invincible, they feel great and whatnot. Tell them to come find me. Tell them to look for the fat Thor with the sticker. Because what I'm going to do is, what we're doing is, it doesn't matter whether you're Thor, it doesn't matter whether you're Marvel, it doesn't matter whether you're DC, whether you're anime, whether you're a movie. Come lift the hammer. Come feel better about yourself. Come, come remind yourself that no matter what you're going through right now, you're always going to be worthy. That no matter what voices are going on in your head, you are going to be worthy. Come lift a hammer, come take a picture, come have some fun, and let's and, and share it, and share it, and share it, and let everybody that you know that is going to come find me. It only takes a second, and it may change somebody's perspective. It may turn somebody's day around. It may turn, I don't want to say like it turns somebody's life around, but when somebody's teetering on that ledge, sometimes it just takes a small action by somebody to get them up that ledge and if this ledge and if this action that i'm trying to do is going to take even just one person off this level of this proverbial ledge i will feel like i've done I, I did something right and i will feel like you know what you don't have to pay me back just pay it forward you pay it forward take a picture put it on instagram tag it with you are worthy let everybody else know what's going on and somebody else may come out and be like hey I just want to lift the hammer. I just want, and I'm like, I will take the time. I don't care if I've got a, like, you guys have been, well, you, Lewis, oh, yeah. have been with yeah. me at a convention. I have no problem walking three feet in 20 minutes. I've done it with cosplays. Yep. It means I'm going to do that for, you know, to make somebody smile, to make somebody happy. I will do that. I will yep. absolutely do that. And I know for a fact I'm doing Thor at least two out of the four days. But I'm seriously and heavily contemplating doing him just all four days. Different outfits, but still do like the whole quote unquote fat form. Do it. So, um, Sounds good. The beard came in today. I don't know. I, I just, I've seen, and I'm trying to keep what he looks like under wraps for the time being. Because if you've seen it from Megacon, he's going to look Completely very different. different. Yeah. But uh, um, keep keep in tune on on uh, William Phoenix's uh, Instagram page as well, and also House of Phoenix cosplay absolutely. So uh, that definitely tap into that because you're gonna want to see the pictures beforehand. That way you could spot him, and you're not asking some random Thor to hold his hammer, and he doesn't give you a <laughs> secret, um, <laughs> just in case. And also you could keep an eye out on on the Man Bites uh, film and media page on facebook and we'll be posting anything that's posted through uh instagram for william phoenix will be posted through that and it'll be shared on there just so everybody knows i'll be keeping an eye on all the the social media during new york comic con for diversely geeks so i'll be doing the same thing for man bites media as well so definitely keep an eye out on, on anything and make sure to to like our page and all that stuff so you can find it Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anything else, William, you wanted to put in there? Um, no, not really. Um, don't be shy. You know, if you see, like, you will know it's me because I'll probably be the only one that has the You Are Worthy sticker on my hammer. And I put it, like, not on the wisp part of the, of the hammer, but on, like, the smaller part. But I will make sure that I keep it where it's visible for everybody to see. Do not be shy. Do not think, oh, he may be hurrying somewhere. He may be doing... I'm doing this, and I know what I could potentially be getting myself into. And I'm okay with that. If I really feel like I need to get to a panel, or I need to get somewhere, 
I may just hold my hammer different to where you don't see it and I'll, and I'll run by. But there's very few panels that I've looked at that I'm like, oh, my God, I absolutely want to go to that panel. There's a very good chance that 90% of the times when I go to conventions, I'm on the floor yeah. pretty much the entire time. time. Yeah, seriously. I think that New York Comic Con in two years, I've gone to maybe three panels. Jesus. Yeah. So yeah, so. definitely keep an eye out for him and check out the social media accounts for the pictures so you have an idea how he looks like and all that stuff. And speaking from first experience, honestly, firsthand experience, William is a teddy bear, dude. You'll meet him and he, he'll like automatically be like, oh, that's that's adorable, you know? And want to give him a hug type of thing. So yeah, anyways. <laughs> But I am a teddy bear. I am not like a Russian communist teddy bear. I am just regular American teddy bear. Oh my god! <laughs> sure. Anything, anything else with the movie news? <laughs> yes, two more things. Dark Army. Paul Feig's uh, directing the new monster movie that is going to be like kind of the rebranding of the Universal Monster series again. Well, this is the first time they they're actually they said fuck the cinematic universe thing that that Marvel did. We're not going to do that. We're not going to copy them. We're just going to do our own things and have these movies that kind of in- interconnect, but not necessarily. Yeah, but I mean, like they tried to do that with the Mummy, and it well, failed. They were doing a, a combined universe, which was going to be different. It was supposed to be like completely interconnected, like the Marvel movies. Yeah, but. Now they're saying, fuck that, scratch that, we're just going to make one-off movies and kind of connect the, the ideas together. That way there's an overarc on it, but not necessarily like the story hinges on making all the films. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm interested in it because obviously Paul Feig is a good director. He did Bridesmaids, Spy, and The Heat. I mean, yeah, those are comedies, but there's elements of action in them. And that's going to be very important for for the movie, I think. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And then the last thing, uh, uh, what do you call it? Mr. Gunn finally tweeted that uh, Suicide Squad cast has officially been released, and it is huge. It looks yes, good. It, is. it really again, does. The first good. one, the first one looked good too. So yeah, hey, well, hey, at the end of the day. You can't say a movie's good just because of the cast, because it could be really shitty writing, you know. So, Taika yeah. Watiti is going to be on the on the cast, yeah, which I, know. I was like, okay, that's yeah. interesting. Capaldi's on there. Peter Capaldi, Idris Elba, Idris Elba, yeah, yeah. Um, Jennifer Holland is going to be in there. Uh, Nathan Fillion, mm-hmm. John Cena. His um, brother's going to be on there too. John Gunn, yeah. yeah but you know, you know, you, what's John Cena doing? The Invisible Man. <laughs> <laughs> Storm Reed is going to be in it. Um, Viola yeah, Davis is going to be in it. Yeah, there's a couple people reprising their roles from the first movie. Yeah, Margot's uh, one of. I'm glad. I'm glad Margot is because I mean, as much as the movie overall was, eh, I kind of liked her. Um, spin she on, did a good uh, job. I think she Harley, did a good job. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I really did. And and it opened up the door for like all these girls that you know are do Harley now. They gave them a new Harley. Yeah, they all. Also... I loved like how the fandom was all like, "Oh, we're gonna get like a million Harley at conventions now because we don't have a fucking million Batman and Superman at conventions." Uh, speaking Harley of Harley, Spider-Man. they also released um, the poster for Birds of Prey, which stars her playing Harley Quinn. Also, yeah, and it's and it's the. She looks like a little. It looks like she took a little bit from Suicide Squad, but then kind of like even made a different Harley. Yeah. Well, so, which I'm kind of liking. We'll see how um, it goes, man. We will see how the Suicide Squad is. Yeah, because the other one is not the Suicide Squad. No, it's so. <laughs> oh, is, is the first one Suicide I mean, Squad, right? Not... I know, I know, but it's yeah. It's... The first, yeah. It was a joke. God damn it. Shut up! Man. It's like when they really did bad. Fast and the Furious, and then they did The Fast and The Furious, and then they did just Fast and Furious. It's like let's take off one letter and make it a different movie. I'm like, all right, whatever. It's like, I right, um, bro. But I mean, we all pretty much know that unless they, they get really surprised that Idris Alba is going to be the new Deadshot. No, well, yeah, because Will Smith sucked. 
Speaking of Will Smith, I actually saw the Aladdin uh, live action. Dude, that shit was awesome. I liked it. I really did. <sighs> I really, really enjoyed I mean, it. It had, it had, it, it's, no. it had its uh, issues. It did. It was all right. I loved, like, I was wondering how they were going to do Yago. And, dude, I was I was happy with it. I was so happy with the way they did it. I didn't Yago. like how they did Jafar, though. I will, I will say that. Why? Uh, just like, he, I don't know. It was just, the fact that he's around the same, that he looks he looks like he could be around the same age as Aladdin. It's like, no, Jafar's supposed to be like this older vizier. And Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, look look at the animated movie. Does Jafar look anything anywhere close in age to Aladdin? No. Aladdin's like, like an eighteen year old kid. Yeah, but he yeah, doesn't and, look and like an eighteen year old. He looks like a freaking the, um... three year old, thirty, forty year old. Yeah, he is significantly younger than the animated, but yeah, I don't think I mean, it's just like like his voice is just like I think it's more realistic to this, this... to the time that old mm. is 50 years old 60 years old at that time so i think they did a little bit more realistic job with this one and honestly the fact that i i was kind of surprised at who directed it i was like what like this is the same guy that did snatch that did uh lock stock and two smoking barrels yeah you know, I was like, "Huh? This is like a, a neutered version of him." <laughs> also, like, the whole—I don't get me wrong, because I absolutely love her, and I think that she's absolutely gorgeous, dude. Um, yes, but like the the whole love story with like, or the attempted love story with like Genie and I love that, the, and, and the, the handmaid. It's like, eh, why? Okay. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't, it wasn't necessary, needed. but instead of having some random, uh, what do you call it, street vendor saying the story, they grab somebody that actually intertwined with the story. But it's not a random street because we all know now that it's the genie that's telling the story. Stay tuned when we become the Aladdin podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll talk about it off the end. <laughs> I get the hint. We're moving on. Next. Okay, fine. Stay tuned after this quick break when we come at you with our new, not so new segment, the movie Bucket Friday, List. Friday, Friday. Sorry. Oh, Spooky the Witch, the new Rambo movie comes out. Oh, God. Yes. Welcome to an exploration of sight and mind, a travel through the world of films and the artists that bring you these masterpieces. Do you love films, directors, actors, cinematographers, editors, composers, or any of the hundreds of artists that bring you these feats of art? I am Louis Lacau, your host, into the world of films, your guide to Man Bites Retro. All right, guys, welcome back for our new, not-so-new segment, The Movie Bucket List, where William has these posters. He chooses a movie at random, surprises Lewis and myself. Oh, it's that segment. Oh, yeah, ourselves. no. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we debate or, you know, talk amongst ourselves and decide if she should not, should or should not be on this list. So, William, what is it? Um. Oh, you're, be, you, you, you're serious? Okay. Um, uh, I can never tell if you're joking or actually serious. I am serious. Don't call me joking. Damn it. You should have gone with Shirley on that one. That would have been a much better intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, oh, yeah, yeah? No, no, oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> that was funny. This, this picture is horrendous. That's not a funny. <laughs> <laughs> Go, dude. So for those that don't know, like Lewis has been sending us pictures from like the nineteen eighties where like <laughs> everybody everybody's looking like they're walking like that they're like the NWA except like <laughs> you guys be the WWA <laughs> What is your sh- what does your hat say? Uh Shapeshifters. It was a like uh throwback eighties band back in the day. 
Interesting. Okay. Probably another white band to listen to. Okay, I like my black and milds. So what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So I decided to go with a comedy this week, this week <sighs> and it's a classic comedy. No, yeah, and we'll I think it's actually what started, huh? We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> okay. Um, when when I prove you wrong, and you're like, oh yeah, it is, then you can be like, fuck, I was wrong. Uh, and I think this was pretty much uh, also started like the parody comedy movie, which then spawned movies like uh, History of the like basically Mel Brooks movies. Um, you know, History of the World, Hot Shots, uh, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. But this one, uh, I mean, it starred Leslie Nielsen. So you can't go wrong with that. Oh, yes. Sorry. There you go. Thank you. We're talking about the original airplane movie. Yes. No, surely. Sorry. No. <laughs> Ah, I, you know, I there's always a scene from that movie that always sticks to me is when the chick just walks by like just fully nude. Do, do you get? Do you guys remember that? Yeah, scene? I don't remember that movie, like hardly. You don't. I I really couldn't stand that movie actually. What? Airplane I really movie? never got into that movie ever. What is wrong with you? I never got into it. I never thought it was funny. Chevy Chase and un fucking bujo. It, it's. <laughs> He's like the the what do you call it, Will Ferrell of the the seventies and eighties. So so Wait, does that mean that you don't on, like uh, National Lampoon's Vacation? Also? I like those movies, but they're still in pool. Like they're pretty bad. Mira, you know that Chevy Chase is not an airplane, right? Isn't it? You're talking about... no, no. It's Leslie David Nielsen. Zucker, Jim Abrams, Leslie Nielsen, Julie Haggerty, mm-hmm. Robert Hayes, <laughs> Lloyd you know, Bridges, you know Net- Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Do you even know what movie I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know who Leslie Nielsen is? Just naked guy? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. So are you (laughs) sure you've seen this movie, Louis? Yes, I have seen the goddamn movie. Because that's the the thing that we were talking about, Shirley. Shirley. Yeah, yes. Don't call me Shirley. Yes, I remember that. Yes. But you remember that scene, right, William, where like the they're just talking yeah. and then this girl just walks by the screen just like with her tits out and I'm like, what the fuck? It's super random. I don't know. I just never got into this movie, dude. I there was there was nothing that I liked about it. I, I really didn't care for it. Like it, it's like the Princess Bride for me. It's super overrated and kind of like, huh? Eh? What? You don't like you don't like I the Princess Bride. I do not Bride like the either. Princess Bride. <laughs> What is wrong with you, man? I just really don't like either one of those two movies. Interesting. Like I So William, what do you like about this? Movie? <laughs> um it has it has been a while since I've seen this movie. I I will admit, yeah. but I I do remember enjoying it when I when I have seen it. Um I mean there's a lot of things like I'm I'm a fan of like I don't even know what you would call it like par- parody comedy or yeah Satirical? satirical no, comedy? No, it's not satirical. Yeah. It's just literally like they parody. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think it's because I mean, well, if anybody's ever listened film. to this show, they know I love puns, and I think that that's where I sorry I officially got like my love for puns because that's basically what these movies are. But especially Airplane, it's just straight up like fun. Like when they're when there's like the news people in the uh, flight control room. And they're like, okay, boys, let's take some pictures. And they literally just walk around the room and just take, start taking pictures off the walls. I was like, oh, my God, that's fucking funny. Uh, and also, you know, and it's that, like, I'm going to argue with you that this is not one of the first satirical comedies. Because if you want to go satirical comedy classic, go with It's a Mad, 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 Mad World from the 1960s. That is a fucking classic with Tracy Spencer. Yeah, but I think that this is what started, like, because it came out in 1980, like... I, like I said, I could have been Kentucky wrong, Fried but... Film came out for before that. It came out in 77. Yes, yeah, but this is the movie that literally, like, jump-started that. And then, because then after that, we got the slew of the Naked Gun movies. Then we got uh, Hot Shots. And you know, Mel Brooks was coming out with his movie. Like, this was, okay, so this wasn't, like, the first one. But this was the one that hit it so big that, like, Hollywood went, like, we got to run with this. And I mean, we still get them, 
Uh, you well, know, I mean, we, Mel Brooks. The scary movie series alone is just all you know, all based on this. Blazing Blazing Saddles came out before this. Uh, I can't remember what year, but it came out before. <laughs> the, High Anxiety. I mean, Silent Movie. Those are all. Those all came out before this, and those are all parody movies from Mel Brooks. So I strongly disagree, sir. Well, you disagree that it should be on the 100 movies to be seen? Oh, definitely, definitely disagree? definitely disagree that this should be on the top 100. Hell no. <laughs> Even besides my opinion aside, that this, this movie has no, like, no reason to be on this list whatsoever. Brandon? Okay. Um. Hmm. I like it. I do. I think it's funny, but I don't think it should be in the top hundred either. I kind of agree with that. I think there are there are more influential and funnier comedies. So I'm gonna go with that. How about you, William? Um. <laughs> we totally shit on his choice. <laughs> No, well, I no, really enjoy I mean, like, airplane. I really do. It's, it's, it's not about shitting on my choice because, like, like I said, like from the very beginning, we knew there were going to be movies that we did not agree that you know we were not going to agree completely whether they need to be on or off, and this is one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that it should, but I think that it should literally be between like the ninety and one hundred. So, like, super, super low in the list. Super low basically. in the list. Okay. All right. Okay, I can respect that because also this is your own personal choice. This is something that influenced you personally, so I get it. Because there's some movies of mine that I would never put on a top 100 of all time list, but for me like personally, that I definitely would put. So. Okay. All right. So. So two days, one yes. Bottom of the barrel, but. Fuck this movie. No, I'm <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, guys, stay tuned. That's a quick break when we come at you live with our main review of the show, which is Rain Man. Kmart sucks. Uh oh. Uh oh. I farted. Uh oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh oh. Um, uh oh. They gave us eight nuggets, not four. Eight nuggets. That's not definitely, definitely eight nuggets. Hey, you lovely nerds. This is Nisha M, your geek mom from Diversely Geek. Diversely Geek is a global nonprofit that promotes self acceptance by highlighting the positive message of fandom. We're all fans of something that has affected us for the better. We like to express that love by embracing our inner geeks with you all on our podcast, Diversely Geek Discusses. We also have a podcast for any Whovians out there called Doctor Who in Review. We often partner with Man Bites Media, so you're bound to come across us sooner or later. You can find us all on our podcast platforms as Diversely Geek Discusses and on social media platforms as Diversely Geek. You can also subscribe on our website, diverselygeek.org, where you can find our podcast videos, original content articles, and so much more. And remember, there's some good in this world, Mr. Aslan. Alright guys, welcome back for the main segment of our show, The Main Review, live, which is Rain Man. Huh? Sorry. When I like a movie, I'm gonna just do that. that? And you immediately know that I like this movie. Dude, I love this movie. This is a fucking classic. It's a banger, bro. It it's a, a banger. banger. I, um, I, when you said this movie, I was like, I gushed. I gushed. I was like, oh. <laughs> I know. I heard you both last week. You were like, yes. I was like, oh, thank God. Because I legit thought that one of you. I know Rain Man is like universally thought of as like a good movie. But I thought that one of you was going to be like, oh, why didn't you choose something like more obscure or something like something that we've never seen? But when I heard both of you well, kind of uh, yeah, I mean, gush, I'm I'm returning. I'm said. definitely returning the favor this week. So you guys, I think, will be happy with what I said. Oh God, Kmart. I'm sucks. not Lewis. So... You know it's going to be okay. Yeah, true, true. Mm-hmm. 
So Rain Man stars Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. Everyone else doesn't really matter. That's really mean. I'm just saying they're the two most important characters in the film. Hey, uh, yeah, you got to talk about Susanna, the beautiful fucking Susanna. Yeah, she is very. She is dude, very. Dude, her eyes, like you, you but, can lose yourself in her eyes, dude. She has these fucking. Lose. Tell, you me, tell me what you find like, attractive about her. Candlelit blowjob, or <laughs> seriously, dude. dude fuck. Her eyes look like that freaking Time magazine picture from back in or a National uh, Geographic picture. Remember? Oh my. God. We'll be right sure. back after these messages because apparently Louis needs yeah, about wait, five wait. minutes to look at somebody's. Yeah, give my my cousin five minutes to bust a nut, and then we'll be right back. Jesus Christ! I haven't um, heard of, I haven't heard him about getting this fucking turned on since they announced that we're doing a whole series on Tolkien. <laughs> Dude, but honestly, like I, this movie is just beautiful from beginning to end. Uh, Brandon, come on, give us the the. So Rain Man uh, stars Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman, as I said. Uh, Tom Cruise is a total douche nozzle named uh, Charlie Babbitt. Um, basically, he, who like sells cars in California and um, finds out that his father, his, whom he has like the shittiest relationship with, has passed away. And he goes to his father's funeral with his girlfriend, Susanna, which my cousin is in love with. <laughs> And uh, finds out that his dad only gave him this convertible that he was never able to drive when he was a kid and his rose bushes. <laughs> so fucked. <laughs> it's so fucked. But it's so Gosh. great because it does so much by just giving that away. You're already establishing a character. You're establishing a motive. And you're establishing everything that you need in a film just within five minutes of exposition. And it establishes everything. Yes. And then he finds out that he has um, an older brother who is played by Dustin Hoffman, um, which his name is, I forgot his name, uh, Raymond. Yes. Uh, Ray. Wow, he says it a lot in the movie. I don't know why the fuck it slipped my mind. Raymond, Ray, uh, who has uh, very severe autism. He's like a uh, an autistic savant. Yes. And he finds out that his father has basically left his $3 million estate to his autistic older brother. Yes. And uh, he basically kidnaps Ray um, and so that basically he can uh, basically coerce the the head of the institution to basically get hand over the, the $3 million to him or or half of it. And yeah, basically it turns into this whole road trip between them both because Ray decides that uh, getting on a plane is way too scary and dangerous. Yeah. And it's the movie's basically all about uh, them, their growing relationship together and like how um, difficult it is for this total asshole. Not only is he an asshole and has no patience, but also... His brother is severely autistic and is very hard to. Well, not only that, he wants maintain. to just use him for everything he has. Yes, he yes, and and he just. But yeah. his growth in character, um, that is Tom Cruise's character. His growth, uh, Charlie pa- Babbitt's growth, is incredible in this film. Like from yeah. the beginning, you could see how much he changes as a character from yeah. the first moment of the film to the very last moments where he's in the in the lawyer's office and you understand how the rain man actually came to be and why that that is so important to him and but everything is is eclipsed by Dustin Hoffman's acting oh dude because holy shit that man literally like his acting is so incredible it's on point like he he is like he personifies like what like a severely autistic person um looks and like how they act basically because uh i have an autistic cousin he's not he's nowhere near as like severe as that um but he does it's little things that like he never looks you in the eye you know routine is like everything to them it's it's like he does an incredible job, um, and he has some great lines like "Kmart sucks." Yeah, I mean, he even won. E R N. That's my main man. <laughs> he even won an Oscar for for best actor in a leading. Yeah. 
they won like four at four four Oscars yeah. and they were nominated for a bunch of other. Yeah, ones, it was right? a best writing screenplay, uh, director, actor, and best picture in eighty nine. I was reading. I was reading up about that movie. They actually, um, in the movie, they they uh, talk about uh, counting cards. Yeah. And they actually, there's a misconception that counting cards is actually not illegal. It's not illegal, but it is frowned upon. And they, if they catch you doing it, yes. then they will definitely kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they, yeah, they'll for sure. But like, they made it sound like it's super illegal in the movie when it's not. You just, you know. If you're smart enough to do it, just don't get caught. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, kind of thing going on. Um, and also, we're, we're missing, like, incredible parts of this film. Like, the, the, Yeah, no, I'm, I just, I just that came up to mind. But, yeah, we'll, we'll the go, go on this. Lewis. Like, just the fucking beautiful way that the camera moves around and it focuses in every time you see, uh, what do you call it, uh, Dustin Hoffman's character, it's always in the distance. It's never close up. You never see close ups of, of Dustin Hoffman ever. In the film, I never noticed until that. the very end, when the brother is actually feeling sympathy for him and everything like that. Yeah. That's when he starts getting closer in. It starts getting into the medium shots and all that stuff, and you see the distance. But then uh, Charlie's character all the time is getting close ups, and so is Susanna. But Dustin Hoffman's character never does at all. What I also like is the fact that. Um, like many movies or many instances where people are talking about like, you know, finding themselves and getting in touch with like their inner self and becoming a better person. What do they do? They always like, you know, there's a stereotype of going out in the desert, going out in the forest, going out somewhere where there's, you know, complete isolation. And if you look at it, there's times where that's what happens. They are in complete isolation. You know, it's just him and it's just the two of them in a car. Like they all, like you know, they go to Vegas. Where's Vegas? Vegas is in the middle of a desert. Like, yep. is it symbolism? Is it you know showing that they are you know that that he, Tom Cruise's character is trying to find himself and he's going through like this soul changing experience with this person who's more in touch with things that we normally are not in touch with, like. When the the matches fall or the toothpick fall, whatever they are, and he counts them and he knows exactly how many are on the ground. Two hundred and forty six. Two hundred. Yep. There you go. Um, <laughs> you're both my way, man. Um, <laughs> but I uh-oh. like the fact uh-oh. that it was like uh-oh. you know it wasn't like um big surprise. Um, <laughs> it wasn't like anybody saying you know oh you must go out in the desert and find yourself and become a very... It's just like, if you pay attention to the cinematography, it's like, this is what it is. This is a soul. As much as you know, he takes him because he, he's got his own motives. He doesn't realize that he's put himself down a path of, re, of, of change, of, you know, finding yourself, or maybe even like redemption to some point. And, you know... <laughs> realizing why his father did what he did and and why he hid his brother from him which i think really you know, adds to the movie as well. I, I, you know ironic ironically what hit me the most is like does he visit his brother like a part of me is like at the end of the movie when he's like i'll see you in two weeks i'm like damn does he actually go see his brother i think he does. does i hope I think because really, really he's don't. realized the attachment that he had, that, that he bonded with his brother, that was just like, I, had he said that at the beginning of the movie, I would no, I mean like he's never gonna go see his brother, and, yeah, and exactly. we and we know this. But also, but, I think the not only the attachment that he got, but I think he finally came to realize when. Uh, now this is gonna go into spoilers, guys. So just in case if you haven't seen the movie that's from fucking eighties, uh, please go out and watch it on Netflix. <laughs> you do, um, because this is gonna be spoiling a big part of it. Um, when they're both white, when he says that, <laughs> when uh, what do you call it? Charlie's told finally that the reason why Raymond got kicked out of the house, basically, and he realizes that all his fear and anxiety is mostly from his father. And I think that point in time where Raymond 
connects with Charlie a hundred percent because he suffers the same traumas from his father that, that uh, Raymond does. And he understands that everything that he went through, Raymond went through. And I think that's where the connection finally, like that barrier that was between the two of them from the beginning completely breaks down. They had a shitty dad. Yeah. They had a really shitty dad. They did. It it seems like Raymond had a better um, relationship with their father, but still probably not great. What's great about this movie also is the fact that it touches like on a subject which back in the day, nobody, like very little was known about it. Yeah. And it was almost taboo to even talk about it because it was like almost like a disease that you just you don't talk about. It. Like like you know, it's like But the way it handles you know, it you know, is it's so there. good. But the way that exactly the way it handles it, like the, the amount of work that the screenwriters had to go through to you know, no, not like say, Oh well this is probably what happens. Like you can see that they're homework in a time in society where you couldn't jump on Google and go, what are the symptoms of autism? What do autistic people feel? What There wasn't all this, all, not paper, sorry, all these studies that had been done. And the fact that it came out the way that it did was extremely, like, to me, adds incredible to the movie. It, like, at no point, and, and, and you will have to excuse me because I'm using the, the um, words that were okay to use back then, okay? But... At no point, especially in a movie that was... What's Rayman? 91, 92? No, 80, 88 or, or 89. 80, 89. Even better, or even worse. You know, it's not like, hey, we're going to have Tom Cruise, you know, treat his brother like a complete retard, because that's what he is. No. Like, it, it's... it's. Well, this uh, this film is based on a true character. It's actually uh, based on on this guy named Kim Peek and Dustin Hoffman and the writer uh, Barry Morrow actually sat down with this person. So they got the mannerisms and everything straight from the source. So everything that that uh, Dustin Hoffman did is literally straight imitation. Obviously, he probably added to to it for the character building and all that stuff. But it, it is based off of a person, an actual person that had this. This, this. but it it does hit home man like at the end of the movie like you know throughout the entire movie Dustin like Raymond is telling Charlie like I need cheese balls I need the syrup I need um you know toothpicks and all stuff and then at the end of the movie like when he gives him the bag before he gets on the train he's like don't worry your cheese balls are in there your toothpicks are in there you have your little TV yeah. so you can see Jeopardy and the people's court and uh I don't know, man. It's just, and then you know, Kmart sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just beautiful to see their relationship like fully blossom by the end of the movie. And I, and I and think the scene Char- that I love the most is like when when they're in the airplane in the airport and they're talking about the airplanes, and he's like, he's flipping out. He's like, no, 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 no. They crash in this state. They crash in this state. Yeah, but every like, airplane has crashed. Nope, Qantas has never crashed. <laughs> But yeah, you it's it's, to Sydney, it's... You get to LA. <laughs> and fun fact, actually, Qantas still has not lost any plane as of yet. They have nope. not had a single crash as of yet. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just beautiful to see their relationship like blossom and char- to see Charlie like evolve into this like not piece of shit anymore. Like by the end of the film, he he. The, the 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 doctor gives him a check for like two hundred fifty thousand. He's like, I don't want that shit. No, I just want my brother. And honestly, this you is know. peak Hoffman and and Tom Cruise. Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise was yeah. a fucking phenomenal actor. I don't care how crazy the guy is; he is a phenomenal actor. He still is, man. Like, like he he legit. It makes is you it makes you person. wonder though if the institution that Rain Man was in. The question is. If the guy wasn't hadn't just been handed over three million dollars, would they have given as much of a shit about him? I think so. Was some just some guy off the street? And I don't think that he they would. I think that he came de- for them. I think he came down to the money. Maybe. Maybe. And that's always a question that I've always asked myself every time I watch this movie. It's 
you know, especially nowadays. But like, I mean, that's... They, would they fought as hard for him if the guy wasn't, you know, because obviously the guy's giving three million dollars, but he's not going to be able to use it. It's going to go. It's going to go to the clinic. Yeah, but also, I yeah. mean, realistically, how? I mean, put up with a with a person like uh, what do you call it, Raymond, for so long. Do you really think that they would do that just for the money? I, I don't know. He's he's rough. Like there were times in the movie where I'd be like, I don't know what I'd do in this situation. Though. Yeah. Oh no, dude. The, this movie gives you the feels. There are certain moments where you're like, oh, dude. I would get frustrated. Like I I feel for Charlie at moments. You're like, I don't know what to do. You know, when like, what do you do if like you have a uh, an like a severely autistic brother that's like, I don't want to get on a plane. And you're like, but we have to. And it's like, he just doesn't, it's, there are definitely a lot of scenes where I'm like, I don't know what I do in that. Like the sex scene where he starts. God. (laughs) 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 You're just like, what the hell? But, and there's moments where I, I probably do the same thing that, that scene where, where Tom Cruise, Charlie gets out of the car and starts screaming at the top of his lungs. (laughs) In the middle of nowhere, it's yeah. brilliant. And then the house, the the random stranger that they stop in, and the poor lady with the, with her kids are like forced to go through all the crazy situation. Oh, that was dude. God bless that lady because I would not let two strangers into like my house. Like well, I think they realized <laughs> that, dude. This poor guy is going ape shit. <laughs> yeah, they're. I've done that though. I agree with you, Lewis. That I've done the whole like get out of my car and be like fuck. Yeah. But uh, I give this movie a solid like nine, nine and a half. It's an incredible movie. Oh, this is a ten out of ten. This is my top Woo! fifty. Woo! Yeah. William, I give it a good nine and a half out of ten. I I, I even like the soundtrack. The soundtrack is really good too. Oh, I Zimmer. didn't know it was Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah. The f- okay, yep. I'll take it. So uh, that is the coveted. That is in the upper echelon. <laughs> of our uh of our ratings for man bites film. yeah for sure uh rain man streaming on netflix if you haven't if you're still listening you've definitely seen it if you haven't it's on netflix i don't know for how much longer but it's there so go check it out stay tuned out this quick 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 <laughs> quick break when we come at you not live never live with the final segment of our show the individual reviews Who's going first? Who's on second? I don't know. I'm third. (laughs) As the songs of awakening rang through, the world was created. The silence was broken. Middle Earth, with its rolling hills, broken mountains, flowing rivers, and beautiful forest, was created. Cellar door is a journey into the mythology, the mystery, and the beauty of Middle-earth. Sit back, close your eyes, and imagine. All right, guys, welcome back for the final segment of our show, The Individual Reviews. Lewis is going first. Yes, and I am going to be reviewing... Last week, I did Patriot. Um, This week, I am going to be doing Patriot Act with Hassan Mana. And this is kind of a comedy show that's based off of current events and all that stuff. I don't know if either one of you have seen it. Um, I've seen like an episode and a half. I legit thought you were talking about the movie. No, no, no. Patriot Act with with Hassan Minaj. It, it's actually on Netflix. It's a Netflix original uh, running series. It's still currently running. There's 26 episodes on it. And let me tell you, if you don't get information anywhere and you refuse to watch the news, if you refuse to just give in to all the bullshit mass media that's out there, and you refuse to listen to Facebook because if you're getting your news from Facebook, what the fuck is wrong with you, first of all? Uh, second of all, uh, no. 
actual yeah. facts and actual uh, studies and sources. And this show does that for you. It kind of neatly packages it. Obviously, it is uh, cited, but he does a good job with it where he actually kind of gives you the information and makes you base your own opinion and does it in a comedic way. Uh, so he's a stand-up comedy, if you don't know, Hassan uh, Manan. He's a, sta- he's a stand-up comedy? He's a stand-up comedian. Sorry. Thank you. There you go. And he was, <laughs> I was like... What? He was he took over the Daily Show. Okay. And he pretty much is doing the same thing as the Daily Show just on Netflix now. So it's easier access for everybody honestly. And it, it's each episode is based on one thing that he wants to uh basically go over. So he goes into like uh let me see some of the episodes that we could go into uh so he did one recently on the elections in India, which I don't know about you, but I didn't know jack shit about the elections in India. Um, Neither did I. And I knew something was going on with that, but I didn't know like in detail about what the hell was going on. Well, it was really fascinating seeing it because it was kind of like, okay, I'm not familiar at all with this stuff. So the fact is, is like, wow, that was pretty cool. Also, he did uh, an episode on hip hop and streaming, which this is actually a really fucking great episode. It actually goes into where, um, oh, what do you call it? Rap and hip hop have actually taken over and used as kind of like a a means to to rebel against governments that are oppressive. And he actually cites sample examples of it. And there's some really interesting stuff in this. And each episode's 20 to, to 25 minutes. And they're pretty, like, packed full of stuff. Like, they also go into the student loan stuff, drug pricing, uh, censorship in, in, in China. Um, I mean, there's a whole crap load of stuff. The policing system, Canada the real cost of cruises and everything like that. And it actually breaks down like why these are issues, why these are things that should be brought up and should be brought to people's attention. And he doesn't just use headlines and stuff like that. He actually goes with sources and facts and builds on those sources and facts and makes it entertaining and engaging with people. Okay. So yeah, it, it's he has four volumes, quote unquote. So it's not like a season that runs once a year. It's uh, every six months it does a run, and okay. it, it's pretty like you go through it pretty quick because they're only twenty twenty five minutes each episode. So you could watch pretty much all twenty five episodes in in a couple sittings, you know, if you really put your time to it. But um, it tackles some pretty dark stuff in it. And it also gives you a lot of information that people really don't know or expect to to be coming out or things like that, you know? So I I think it's a very interesting show. Uh, Give it a 7 out of 10. I definitely recommend it to anybody out there that's interested in learning and actually... Um, following politics and following things that that really do matter and and getting information out there, you know. So yeah, that that was my review for for this week. All right, guys, uh, I'm second. So for this week, I hope to God no one has reviewed this. I don't think we have. I I I really need to start uh keeping track of what you guys re- review also. Because I'm very terrified that I'm going to pick something that you guys have reviewed. But um, so this this week I'm going with another show that I started watching last week, um, and I'm totally obsessed with it. And that is streaming on Netflix. It's called Mind Hunter. You guys there? Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. I don't think that we have. Okay. Cool. Cool. Perfect. I'm I'm scared because uh, for the listeners, I was having internet issues. That's why I'm like, can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, we haven't reviewed it yet. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, have you guys heard anything about Mind Hunter? Yes. Seen both seasons. It's fucking amazing. Mind Hunter is probably the best Netflix show, like period, right now. Mind you, I haven't seen other Netflix shows, but I, in my opinion, I think it's the best written 
the best acted and the best shot uh Netflix. Oh, 100%. Like 100%. It's show. fucking brilliant. It's it's a brilliant show. So I'm uh not caught up. I still need two two uh episodes in season 2, but I've pretty much seen most of it. Um so Mindhunter uh is about uh two uh special agents in the FBI in the late 70s which uh they in the behavioral science unit that basically start interviewing um serial killers they're not called serial killers at that time they're they're called sequence killers and all that stuff to basically um come up with like a a program uh to study them and basically learn why they kill so that maybe they can catch uh other serial killers in the future or at that time that are that have gone cold or whatever and it's like super interesting um they they do interview so it's based on a book the book is non-fiction but the show is like is fiction i'm assuming the characters are not like uh holden and and um Ted and bill sorry are not are not real people you guys are there right i'm freaked out then I'm, we're right here all right cool cool um and i'm just gonna go uh-huh Mm-hmm. Thank you. Just yep. say uh huh. Mm-hmm. Just say uh huh like uh-huh. every minute or so, so I know that I'm not talking on deaf ears, and we're good. Um. So yeah. So they go around and they actually interview like real life uh, serial killers, like the co-ed killer. Um. At one point, they were they they interview Son of Sam and mm-hmm. other killers and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you, William. You're so good. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's, it's, I, I had heard things about this show, but I, I went in like not knowing anything, just knowing basically that it's a, like a murder mystery, you know, like detective show. And I was just blown away by it. Um, this is Netflix's like Westworld, basically like a very well-written show. It's, it's just incredible. And I would highly recommend anybody that has not seen it and is into like detective shows to go watch it. Cause it's this, it definitely is dude. This, this is amazing. It's not only just a detective show, but it's also like the fact that it's that kind of crime, yeah. uh, true crime, mm-hmm. uh, what do you call it? Criminal minds. Yeah. Meet, like this, like mastermind series. And it, it's beautifully shot. And then every single actor in it is, like they're fucking great. Yeah. Uh it's it's uh directed by uh David Fincher. Yes. Um he I actually was just reading up on the show. He wants to do 5 seasons of it. So, but that but Wow. Yeah. Um the seasons I can are, see it going 5 seasons too the, easily. Yeah, yeah. The seasons are not long. The first season is 10 episodes and the second season is 9. Unfortunately, it took them 2 years to come out with season 2. So hopefully it doesn't take that long for season 3 to come out. But um, oh, every time yeah. I hear something like that, I think of um, Sherlock Holmes with uh, yeah. Cumberbatch. Yeah, with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, but and yeah, that's very. It's very much similar to that. Um, I think it's a better show than that. I actually don't like that show that much. What? That's just me. Sorry. What? I don't like uh, Sherlock. Sherlock. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Well, of that's it. because RDJ is a better Sherlock anyway. No. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Cumberbatch is always yes. going to be a better Sherlock. All right, okay. all no, right. he's not. All no, right. he's not. So, not only is it a detective show, but it also goes into the lives of these special uh, agents in the FBI and like how it does take a toll on on some of them because some of them are just like so stoic about it like it doesn't just it doesn't bother them at all and then some of them they go home and they actually do take the baggage of like you know uh, investigating these crimes where you know even children have been murdered and stuff like that it's a super super interesting show and i was hooked from the first episode i was like whoa this is it felt different than most netflix shows that i had seen so i would i would I would give this like a like a nine and a half. I think it's incredible, and I'm super excited to end to finish season two. And I, I'm super excited to keep watching uh, for the foreseeable future for how however long the show goes on for. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited for the next season to see where yeah. the hell this goes. Yeah. So yeah, William, wrap up the show, buddy. So I'm going to review a movie. Which I had seen in movie theaters when it came out, and 
I don't really usually watch biopics so close together from like movie to like streaming because I'm like, okay, I've seen it. I know what happens and whatnot, but I really want to sit and rewatch this because I thought it was very well done. And it's streaming on Hulu at the moment. Uh, and it's called Operation Finale. Hmm. Never, Never heard, heard of it. Of it. Um, it doesn't have a huge cast. Okay. Uh, I want to say, uh, is it uh, Ben Kingsley that's... Um... Hang on one second. What is it, called? it is Ben Kingsley, yes. I'm looking Operation it up. Finale? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. It is Ben Kingsley. Uh, it's got Nick Kroll in it too, which I'm starting to really like. He's gaining some steam. Um, Oscar Isaac also, like I would say, are probably like the three main, care, um, three big names in the movie. Um, it was definitely not a mega hit at the movie theater, but um, it's based on a true story. Um, it's based on a covert mission. Uh, but from that was so after the Second World War, as we know, a lot of Nazis ran and went into hiding in Chile and huh? in Chile and Argentina. Yes. Well, not Chile, but mostly Argentina and Brazil. Um, <laughs> and um, the designer of the concentration camp, so one of the main designers uh, was Adolf Eichmann. And this is basically how Mossad went about capturing him and bringing him to justice. Uh, he didn't even go to Nuremberg. He ended up like he got tried in Israel, and then he got oh, found yes. guilty. And then uh, um, he was executed for his war crimes. Uh, the movie is two hours and three minutes long. Um, because like it's a biopic, there's not there's not a lot of exposition, but I mean there's just enough to where, it, you know, you if you don't know what you're going into, you know, if you're like, oh, this looks cool, but I don't know what it's about. Um, it tells you like the backstory of it. Kingsley does an amazing job portraying uh, Eichmann. Uh, you know, he's rebellious till the very end, and he's just like, you know, you're stereotypical German Nazi, which was, you know, basically like, I did no wrong. We were following orders. So we, you know, I, I believed in the cause and I still believe in the cause. Um, and, you know, this, this group that is tasked with not only kidnapping him, but having to bring him back to Israel, how, you know, you see like how he tries to turn them against each other uh, you know, like, you, you don't understand how, like, you're sitting in front of a guy that is one of the top people um, responsible for the death of, like, 12 million people. And how they don't just put a bullet in his head and get it over with. It's a good movie. It's obviously not a comedy. It's it's not something that, you know, you want to sit around with the kids. But it's definitely, if you're into historical, like, uh, historical biopics, this is a movie that you should watch. This is a great movie. It's very well done. Um, to me, I'll check it's it out. a good like nice. eight and a half, nine out of ten um, for it. And I was going to save it and be like, oh, let's, you know, maybe I'll do it for like the, um, the the main review. But then I saw a different movie that I'm like, you know what? We we had a good main review, and I'm gonna keep things, you know. Happy go lucky, like Rain Man was a serious one. So I'm like, we'll do a little comedy, why not? But Operation Finale, streaming on Hulu. Um, check it out. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, it's I also streaming on Amazon Prime as well. But but do you have to like rent it? No, no, it's free on Amazon. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. You got two options. If you don't have Hulu, you got Amazon. Woo! Uh, so, William, what is uh, your pick for next week? Pick is one is any. <laughs> wait, wait, your pick is what? No, oh, well. Uh, my pick is one of what I think one of his best career movies. Oh, boy. 
<laughs> came out in 1997. Okay. And it's funny that I don't know who 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 had that laugh, but that's very resounding of like one of his characters. That's no oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. What do you think it is, Lewis? Oh, I don't know. I'm just fucking. Uh, yeah, I'm. 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 <laughs> I am totally. So lost. we're sticking with Hulu. Okay. It's 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 doing it's going on Hulu. And I haven't seen it in a while, and I think they will will all enjoy it. I picked Liar Liar. Mm. Oh, the mm. pen is blue. The pen is blue. <laughs> so you know, like I said, we we, uh, we we we're coming off a movie that we all enjoyed, and it was a serious one. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that we're all going to enjoy. Oh hell this yeah! One fucking, as, as I'm already calling yeah, it. I love Liar Liar, and I think all three of us do. So, oh, yeah. do we just want to record the main review this week, and then we can just like edit it into <laughs> next week's episode? Because I'm pretty sure we all know it by heart. Because oh, originally I was going to go with Demolition Man with uh, Sylvester oh, Stallone. I'm so and... glad you did not. Jesus Christ, I would have lost. No, it. I don't want to pick you for my next main review. Depending on depending on what you pick for us next week. In now other words, know I, I know that I need to give you punishment. Oh, no. But no, I figured like we're 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 looking down <laughs> the barrel of October, where we're probably going to be doing mostly horror movies. Oh, a good comedic comedic movie to you know bring us out and in, into the lovely, wonderful world of Halloween. I figured this was like a great a great pick to go with, or a great flick. Sorry, to go with. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right awesome. guys so if you enjoyed our show uh remember to visit manbitesfilm.com and also our sister site diversitygeek.org and check out our other crazy shows that lewis does that i have no part in but whatever i'm there you know i'm part of the team somewhere like uh cellar door with him we got uh wizarding world with william phoenix and then you started yep. your crazy madman with a mic um yes and those are both on on retro uh cellar doors with nisha from diversely geek and we just relaunched episode one we kind of reduxed it and remastered it and stuff like that and kind of made it on you know you gotta wait a few years before you go back and remaster stuff right well because no our first recording and then four weeks later george lucas the fuck out of it and be like oh no no, wait we remastered it made it better and added more stuff that we really did not need to add but no seriously though if you if you like the first if you like the first episode of cellar door that came out you're gonna love this like retouching on it so do check it out. And this is coming from me. And <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan of the show. You know how much I'm all about Lord of the Rings. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> uh, if you're new to the show, I'm not. Uh, but definitely check it out because I give him a lot of shit for it. But the man knows what he's talking about. The man can put on a really good show along with Nisha. So, <laughs> it's, so it, beautiful. it has the Harry Potter endorsement that is <laughs> yeah stop stop right. you're bringing a tear to my eye god <laughs> wand up and everything damn <laughs> bro all right i got a tear to my eye too man Woo! all right you gotta be all get your fellas wet let's go wet oh, wow. you, gotta, you gotta do it with the h <laughs> wet wet <laughs> why sorry uh thank you lewis thank you brandon thank you william you thank you sir <laughs> I am Brandon, and we will see you guys on the next episode of Man Bites. Kmart sucks. Yes, yes, it does. I farted. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs>